Intimacy is the basis of any relationship, whether it's emotional, physical, mental, experiential, or spiritual intimacy. Intimacy is the ingredient to connection. It's what allows a relationship to have the substance. It is the medium of exchange of energies, and it's the cross point of where minds, hearts, and souls intersect. In order for there to be intimacy in a relationship, we must have the ability to look within and to understand who we are because ultimately it comes down to our willingness to express our truth and to open ourselves up to another that intimacy can occur. So the best way to look at intimacy is through the catchword, into me see. That's how we can break down intimacy into a dialogue that we have with and within ourselves in order to understand who are we in an intimate interaction with another. Because ultimately, we have no way to reach somebody else without first understanding who we are and what we're trying to achieve from an intimate encounter. Intimacy must exist within any working, professional, or familial bond. It is the place where we open ourselves up and become the authentic representation of our own truth. Which means that to be intimate with ourselves is to learn how to engage healthily in an intimate relationship with another. What's lacking in most modern day relationships is this very territory of intimacy. We have lost as a society our sacred connection to self and to others because we have forgotten the true depth of intimacy. This is not something that is reinforced in schools. Most kids don't grow up knowing what the true value of intimacy is. And it's not something that most people cherish in their relationships. Because the general focus in relationships tends to be on the self. We tend to, as a society, want to look for ingredients, tools, people, situations, and things that fill the inner void and make us feel more seen, heard, appreciated, loved, and just whole for who we are. But in trying to approach a situation or a person or a thing with the desire to fill yourself without necessarily looking deeply enough within you to understand who you are and what you're trying to achieve in life, you're only going to be half-heartedly approaching the quest for intimacy. Because in trying to approach a relationship without the feeling of true sacred connection within yourself, you're not going to be understanding why you're even in that dynamic. And so you can never expect intimacy when you're not choosing to be deeply intimate and honed into who you are at your core. This means that the main impediment to all kinds of intimacy is the inability to look within yourself and to see where you have to be intimate with those parts of you that must be reflected in your externality. This is ultimately the challenge that we face as a soul in the physical incarnation. In the 3D world, we have to learn how to express these multivariate aspects of our being in order to learn how to see ourselves in the mirror of another, how to connect with someone else in a way that allows us to meet the divine through our sacred interaction with them and with us as a whole. Ultimately, we're all one, but that doesn't mean that we're able to approach that oneness with another person unless we first are willing to feel as one within us. And so the main unifier that has to exist within us to experience intimacy in any dynamic that we find ourselves in is being willing to find wholeness in ourselves, which means seeking outside of the domain of the conscious mind to truly understand what are we feeling, what are we thinking? What are we wanting? And do we feel actually whole and true to ourselves when we show up to the world? Because if we don't, another person can never deliver on that promise of intimacy that we're not providing to ourselves. When it comes to sacred partnership, intimacy is the thing that most people look for. Many people look for a relationship that fulfills them sexually, emotionally, mentally, even spiritually. They may dream of an encounter with someone who can take their soul to the next level, who can make them feel full of life, full of love, full of a desire to be. Except, unless we can be truly and fully intimate with ourselves, we can't even make that partnership a lasting one. Because what happens when you encounter somebody else and you're still not fully willing to venture into your own inner world is that they end up triggering you. They end up provoking you to the point that you start projecting your issues onto them simply because you're unwilling to be truly intimate with yourself. This is actually the purpose of many karmic, many soulmate, and even twin flame relationships. Teaching intimacy through the reciprocation of the energy that you're holding within yourself that you're not allowing yourself to release or to be fully intimate with to understand who you are at your core. This is the challenge we're faced with as a soul that has a conscious mind or an operating system in which we think we know all that we know or we think we see all that we can see about ourselves and others and yet what's beneath the surface is the whole truth. 
which means that we're going to continually be attracting people into our lives who potentially can't be intimate with us or who can't see and love us completely because that is the calling we're giving ourselves to practice intimacy with ourselves. Many people venture into relationships looking to fill a void to stop being lonely, to stop feeling empty, to do more fun things in life or to experience intimacy in light and half-hearted ways. But that intimacy also ends up dying. And so what many people experience who are on a spiritual path to more evolution and to conscious expansion is that the partners who you might have had before you entered a space of true inner awareness and growth are the partners who no longer will be willing to meet you at your level and to continue to expand with you. Because what happens when you choose to be truly intimate with yourself is you have to be honest about where you're at, which means that the people who are not ready to evolve with you are the people who you're going to have to also part ways with. This is a tough one for a lot of people to accept. Why is it that we can't change people or force some people to be more intimate with us in ways that we want or to be intimate with themselves in ways that we want them to be intimate? The truth is intimacy is a challenge that we must partake in in our inner journey. It's like the challenge of self-love, having to give yourself what you need in order to feel whole, to feel inspired, to feel fully fulfilled and truthful within yourself. To teach someone else intimacy is best done when you choose to fully empathize and love yourself to the core. Because only by loving yourself can you even set the example for somebody else to do the same. Typically, people who have issues with emotional, physical, mental, or spiritual intimacy are the people who try to flee from themselves the people who try to look for the external solutions to fill the issues of their inner world. These are the people who try very hard to manifest the perfect relationship, the perfect things, the perfect jobs, the perfect situational outcomes that they believe can predict their long-term fulfillment. Except by trying to search for that solution, which is external in nature, they're choosing to deflect the need to look within and to see where those inner aspects are still not fulfilled, where there is no alignment because Ultimately, the lack of intimacy stems from childhood. It stems from a time in your life when you were not feeling loved enough or capable of providing yourself the intimate experience which you truly deserve. And so when it comes to building intimacy and a life of true intimacy with others, we must first learn how to remedy the absence of intimacy from within. Now, what are some reasons why people would choose to not be intimate with themselves? Well, quite simply, most people don't know how to love themselves how to sit with themselves and to feel their feelings, to simply be in the silence, to experience their inner world, to take off the judgment and the pressures of the world, and to just accept what they're going through, to understand that they are okay just being themselves, and to feel that they are a whole soul, undeniably, even if they've gone through challenging experiences which challenged their ability to love themselves. We must retrain ourselves to experience intimacy even when we experience aspects of ourselves that we have been suppressing, that we've been not loving, that we've been feeling need to be repressed and rejected and judged because those are the very aspects that serve as blocks in between us and the intimate dynamics we're seeking to achieve. Quite simply, whenever we feel like we are lacking intimacy in a relationship or in any situation in life that deserves our full presence and our full sense of being, there are parts of us that are choosing to contradict that need for intimacy, that are making us feel like we don't deserve to be seen. We don't deserve to show our true voice, our true face, or our true intentions. If you ever feel like somebody's not showing up to you with that full intimacy, they're mirroring in you some desire for you to also not be seen, to not be completely vulnerable and surrendered to this exchange of truth. Because ultimately, that's what intimacy is for. Whatever the intimate dynamic may be, it is teaching you a lesson of how you can find oneness through surrendering your ego's desire to constantly be a certain way in order to just represent your full authentic sense of self in that moment. To show up to any situation with utmost intimacy means to look inside yourself to the degree that you can abolish any need to construct falsity, fakeness, any false pretenses at all and make you feel inferior in some way just because you're showing up as yourself with no agenda at all, with no desire to construct any falsity because you are feeling whole enough to just be you. It is when you can be yourself that your true colors can shine and other people can appreciate you for just being yourself. This is the paradox when it comes to intimacy. You may feel like you are not satisfied being yourself, so you look for people that are only going to see a limited aspect of you, making you feel even less fulfilled in the long run. 
Because from that mindset of limitation, when you feel unworthy of being loved and of feeling fully accepted for who you are, you're going to attract people who have the same issue, who look for superficial dynamics in which they just want more sex, more interactions, more relationships, and more cheap interactions which limit their true potential to be seen and to be accepted fully. However, at any given time, you can choose to look at where you are in life, at your intimate dynamics, at your relationships, at your friends, at your family, and think about what do you really deserve and what do you really want to be experiencing along your path to deeper intimacy. If you're feeling like you're limited in your ability to connect deeply, think about where you're limiting your ability to go deep within yourself, where you're choosing to sabotage opportunities to connect deeply with others and instead choosing to just choose the route of self-distraction, of running away from yourself in order to avoid the deep confrontation with all aspects of you. If you found yourself in a relationship in which your partner is choosing to not be fully devoted to intimate exchanges, you can choose to let go of that connection because you choosing to be intimate with yourself also means you choose to align with the truth that you're feeling. It means you no longer deny the desire to be with someone who meets you at your level. It means you seek growth and you actively align yourself with the people, things, and opportunities that allow all of you to shine and to be the embodiment of your true essence. Doing this is an act of self-love. It's an act of devotion and commitment to the Most High because when you choose with certainty to be as one with your soul, you can be sure that life becomes an intimate encounter with yourself just in a way that is reciprocated through the mirror of your consciousness. And that's the amazing thing we can begin to realize. That when we choose to do this inner work and to activate our ability to truly explore ourselves and all the colors of our inner self, we can choose to see the world as an expression of us. Which means that the people we connect with after we choose to be more integrated and intimate with ourselves are the people who truly see us, who truly get us. And that leads us to manifest the people that can continue to escalate our growth, that continue to see and love the parts of us that even we cannot, and that we can learn to see the divine in by representing the parts of us that we still have to love fully. Whenever there is a lack of intimacy, there is a lack of a desire to connect so deeply to that point where you push away your ego and you side more with your soul which is seeking that unity consciousness. The part of you that's seeking oneness and the integration of all the things that are despaired in your world that ultimately leads you back to the truth of this beautiful sacred oneness. A sacred relationship is not one in which everything is perfect, there is no conflict and both people are exactly the same. It's rather a situation in which both people recognize that they are mirrors of each other. Which means by taking their best interests to heart, they entangle with each other's emotional states feeling intimate with each other's core intentions, core desires, and core needs, taking as part of themselves that truth that in order to love the other, they must love themselves. And by loving themselves, they're subsequently loving the other. Only when we are courageous enough to exchange energies with somebody else in this sacred way, by learning that whatever we align with is ultimately what we are choosing to bring into our energy field, that what we energetically are is what we energetically create a vibrational match to in the world around us. And that is what manifests sacred partnership. When you choose to be so coherent and so loving with and within yourself that you manifest someone that lets you go that layer deeper. And with the interaction with them, you learn to see what else you must love, what else you must align with. And what follows typically is an incredible alchemical marriage of these two souls that end up discovering themselves, aligning their chakra system, experiencing kundalini sex, and a lot of incredible merging that happens on the levels of mind, body, and spirit to accompany this journey of oneness that happens within. Ultimately, many people are afraid of intimacy because to be intimate means first and foremost to be truthful, to see the full picture, to recognize your light, to see the truth that you harness, and to not let anybody or anything that is not deserving of your frequency remain in your reality. It means you choose to carry such a high frequency that you know with certainty that the people who are not a match to that frequency will naturally bounce out of your field. And the people who belong are those that continue to help you elevate your frequency as you stick with them along the ride. To be intimate with yourself means that you choose to use this journey of greater intimacy to bring good to the world by choosing to maintain alignment in all of your relationships, in all of your interactions, by choosing to be honest, truthful, carry integrity, and have a soulful intention to meet others where they are, by choosing to see the true depths in your heart and soul.